folks. Guess what? It's cold out. Cold and windy. But we had a little bit of sun today. It's starting to set. So I am in one corner of my garden because the garden is behind the camera, right? And I went to see if I could do anything in my garden. Well, there's two small beds, two by two feet wide by eight feet long, I guess, that I was able to work enough to uh, not get muddy. The other beds, I tried to move it around and great big clumps of balls of dirt would move around, so it's just too early. But two beds, I was able to move the dirt around a little bit. So still a ways to go. Tomorrow is supposed to be sunny. But I need to get in my garden. I need to expand my garden, which I do every year anyway, a little bit by little bit. And I need to make some boxes. Now folks, you don't have to get fancy when you make your your raised if you're doing raised beds. You don't have to get fancy. You don't have to go out and get all kinds of new lumber just to sit on the ground, because any lumber that has contact with the ground is going to rot, right? You don't have to go all out and get all kinds of good lumber. You can get scrap lumber. Go to a lumber yard. Go to a local sawmill, and maybe they've got some pieces there that, you know, just don't make great. There's other ways to make raised beds, too. There's the hugel culture, right? I tried that one year. I got rid of them the next year, let me tell you, because I have a problem with slugs here. So, yeah, slugs are my enemy. But anyway, I'm in the corner of my garden, and still a lot of work to do. And I can tell you, folks, it's cold out. It's really cold. So, remember those, the, that 10 pounds of onions that I diced up and, well, chunked up and put them in that net uh, mesh hanging natural dehydrator, right? It has six trays and it's two feet wide. Six trays right straight up. It held 10 pounds of onions. They're almost dry. Now, they probably would have been dry by now if I had kept my, my stove going. But when it wasn't too bad out, and it's been pretty cool this week, but I've let my fire go out at night and start it the next night. And then we had all that moisture from all that rain, right? So they probably would have dried a lot better. Um, but if it weren't so wet out and so damp out, I would have hung them outside because we've been getting a lot of breeze and they would have dried in no time that way. But I'm going to call it about six days and then I can store those onions away and then I'm going to start on my carrots and I've got a handful of peppers and I've got, I just got a lot of things I want to play with. Because dehydrated food takes up a lot less space, right? So if you're running out of space, you might want to think about dehydrating. Now what I've got to do is take one medium onion and cut it up and put it all by itself on like the bottom tray or whatever to see what that equivalent, what the equivalent is to one medium dried onion. So when I go to use them, how to use them, right? You, I like onions so you really can't get it too oniony for me. I just like creamed onions, I like onion soup, I, I just like raw onions, cooked onions, baked onions, I just love onions. So, so something to think about, you, I'm sure you already know all this folks, but if you can dry food, get it cheap, like Shelly, she goes to the Dollar 25 store and gets it frozen, right, then brings it home and dehydrates it, perfect idea, wonderful idea. So I'm going to try to dehydrate as much as I can and play around with it. Because I used to dehydrate an awful lot, but it's been years, folks. So 
watching Shelly's videos kind of got me back into that. And I can't, you know, I live without power, so I'm going to have to do it nature, out in nature, right, or inside with the fire. But there's also, I, I just want to say this. If you go to your feed and seed store and you get a 50 pound bag of cracked corn or whole corn, whatever you want, it's already been dried for you, right? Now, you can take, cracked corn will break down faster, but it'll stay a long time if you store it right. So even if you kept a 50 pound bag in, in your food stash where it's, where it's stored correctly, you can always take a cup or two or three cups of that that uh, cracked corn and put it in a blender, right? And you've got cornmeal, right? So that's something to think about. Um, boy, I wish I could get in my garden, folks. So anyway, um, rice is easy to store. Pasta is easy to store. Flour, if you're careful, right? You got you got to know how to do all this stuff. You got to do your own research, right? So, I think I have a buttload of sawdust being delivered. Maybe next week. I think. Now, a lot of people wonder what I do with sawdust. I do a lot in sawdust, folks. I have chickens, right? And if I allow the sawdust to dry, I could use that instead of shavings, right, as, as litter. I also grow my onions, my carrots, and my potatoes in sawdust, right? There's a way to do that. You need to, because sawdust will rob your plants of nitrogen. So if you have nitrogen-liking plants, let's just take cabbage, for example. Cabbage likes nitrogen, right? So if you put the sawdust in when it's damp and this time of year, and you mix a little blood meal in with that every so often, side dress it, put your fertilizer in if you want, or your, your chicken litter, that's what I'm going to do. Add more nitrogen, right? And as it warms up through the summer, we're hoping, right, that it warms up through the summer and if we get a drought, that sawdust that is underneath your cabbage plants will remain damp, right? And also remain cool. So the cabbage really thrives in, in growing in sawdust, folks. Well, it does for me here anyway. You just got to pay attention to the nitrogen and side dress it as you need to. So I use it in my garden. I use it in my coops. And because this land was stripped, years and years and years ago right down to the clay uh i cleared all this by hand right afterwards it was like a chopping it was seriously four feet of brush over the whole thing well i moved all that out and i got brush piles here there and everywhere and so when it rained it got really slippery and i knew i had to do raised beds anyway because of the clay and my garden is on a slope that faces south. So what I did was laid down, I just got as many tarps, used tarps as I could. And I covered my whole garden with it. Then I put down my raised beds. And then I took sawdust from the sawmill and put it on top of the tarp. Just because I've got brown tarp, green tarp, blue tarp, silver tarps, and it just kind of looked patchworky. So I just put the whole, covered the whole tarps with sawdust. Now, in the five years that I have put the sawdust down, I keep having to put the sawdust down because everything comes from uphill and the snow melt and the, the rain runoff right down smack down in the middle of my garden there's a river it's not a river but it flows like a river and it washes the sawdust down so i've just got to 
It's, it's just cosmetic, folks. It's just cosmetic. And if I have time, I'll putter away at that. So that's another use for sawdust. I also have a sawdust toilet system in my house, right? Because I have no running water. So I use the, the sawdust dry toilet method. So that works really good. And I have not been able to find peat moss, folks. And when I have found it, it is incredibly expensive. Even though peat moss goes a long ways in my bathroom compost mixed with sawdust, um, I'm not going to spend the amount of money that they are asking for it. So I'm going to use what I can, then I'm going to revert back to the sawdust toilet, just using the sawdust. So my cousin Shay and I were talking, you know, it's been cold and wet this spring, but we've had cold and wet springs before, and it's turned out hot and dry. Um, my well, which is right next to the bog, it has gone dry before, folks. Okay, my sister's up the road has gone dry before. So, it's pretty hard to water your garden when, you're, when your well is dry. So, I have a bog, right? And two buckets, one in each hand, haul them all the way up here and water my plants that way. That's where the, saw, the damp sawdust um, comes in awful handy because it'll hold that moisture, right? So the sky is awfully pretty. It's got a lot of blue and gray and yellowish orange. And the sun is setting, it's getting dark, and it's, it's awfully cold, folks. So I just want to remind people that if you live in a dry area that's known for drought, if you get yourself a cube of peat moss, it goes a long ways. And if you mix that in with your dirt and it, you mix it in and make sure it, the peat moss is damp when you put it in there, right? And you mix it up. So when you do get rain, it'll help hold that moisture a whole lot longer so you don't have to worry about the watering as often. That works very well, but peat moss is inert, right? It just doesn't have any nutrients in it, but it holds the water. But you cannot put it in dry, folks, because when you wet it, it'll just beat up, and it takes forever. It seems to take a lot of water to, to dampen peat moss, but if you do that now, and if you haven't planted yet, if you do that now, and the spring rains come, it'll make that damp for you. So, I don't know, folks. I don't know. But you can grow in anything, right? Now, I know people don't like the idea of growing anything in old tires. Because, you know, it's rubber and it's not good for you. Well, neither is starving, folks. Starving's not good for you. And people have grown in tires for years and they haven't died yet, folks. Okay? And your plants don't come out rubbery and you're... Your, your vegetables don't come out rubbery, and they don't smell like rubber, and they don't taste like rubber. So whatever you can plant in, whatever you can find, old totes with a crack on the bottom, pail with a crack on the bottom, old tires, cut off barrels, scrap lumber, whatever you can, and fill them with dirt and plant something in it, folks. It doesn't have to be pretty in order to grow food, okay? If you're looking for pretty, you're going to spend a, quite a bit of money, folks. And your belly's not going to care what that food was grown in, all right? So this is getting long. Thank you for coming back. I have not checked my mail. I have not checked my email. And I have not caught up on the comments, folks. But I will, okay? It's been incredibly long week. And... It's a busy time of year, so I probably will not be posting every day. Or so I might post three or four videos a day. Who knows? We'll see what happens, okay? So keep doing what you can, folks. Go get some rice. Go get some ramen noodles, if nothing else. Go get some pasta. Go get some frozen vegetables at the Dollar Twenty Five store and, and learn how to dehydrate or pick up dehydrating again or or continue dehydrating again okay so 
I guess it is what it is, folks. We just gotta, we just gotta continue doing it because it's just not looking good and it's not getting any better, right? I would rather have everything planned out and prepared, and if nothing happens, I'm not out anything, right? Except for going to town, and going grocery shopping, right? So it's not going to hurt, folks. If you're running out of room, learn how to dehydrate, dehydrate, and it'll shrink up that space so you can tuck a thing here, a, a 20, a 10 pound bag of onions will probably fit in a quart or two quart jars, right? And it's shelf stable, <clears throat> so that saves room. You don't have to worry about them rotting or whatever, right? So it's just another way to preserve, folks. All right, I'm cold. My feet are cold. I'm in my sneakers, and the ground is just cold, folks. So have a good day.